Hi guys, it's Danny the Traveler and I'm here with Rocky the Traveler who's actually on the other side of this camera. Um, he's filming me, so we did a little bit of a, a changing roles. Um, so yeah, welcome to another episode of The Rocky Road Show. And I'm here to talk to you about the three, or three, biggest expenses you'll have when you're traveling with your dog. So I hope you guys are surviving the heat because we've been living off of ice cream for like the past three days. And Rocky loves his ice cream. Which brings me to my next point. Um, now, food and treats are just one of the many things that you'll probably spend money on while you're traveling with your dog. So yeah, me and Rocky have been traveling around Europe and the UK now for uh, about four or five years. And we've been to almost 25 countries together. And during that time, I've learned a lot about how to budget while traveling, not only for me, but for Rocky as well. And so today I'm gonna break down some of the costs that you might face when you visit Europe with your dog. And they come down to mostly three expenses. Uh, so food, yeah, let's start with food. Um, okay, so this one can be quite individualized because uh, only you know what it is that you feed your dog. Uh, but it's also quite simple to break down in terms of costs. Now, I won't get into what sorts of food are best for your dog, um, but I do feed him a mix of uh, home-cooked food. And uh, this includes chicken or turkey or salmon or other types of fish, um, as well as fruits and vegetables. Um, so, and when we can, we, we try to mix in some raw food as well. Um, and you know, these are things that for the most part you can find at your, um, at any local grocery, st uh, any local grocery shop or, um, or a, a local pet food store and it won't cost too much. Um, so while traveling, it can be quite inconvenient to carry around a big bag of dog food. So what I do is, uh, if I'm going away for short trips, I'll just pack um, Rocky's dog food in individual sealed, individually sealed bags. Uh, other times, if we go off to a new city for a, a long time, then it isn't practical to be hauling around a huge bag of dog food. Um, so it's quite possible that, a, and it's and it's quite possible that a, a local store might not even have uh, Rocky's food. Um, so we'll have to look at. Sometimes we'll have to go to a pet store and just see what they offer. Uh, but as a general rule, I stay away from like this uh, normal supermarket supermarket uh, dog kibble, uh, which is cheap, but I just, um, yeah, we're just not, it's not something I want to feed Rocky. So uh, yeah, generally speaking, the bigger the dog food bag, uh, the more money it'll save you in the long run. But as I said, it's not very convenient to be hauling around a huge bag of dog food. Uh, so generally you have to settle for the smaller dog food if, if you're, you know, if you're buying dog food for your dog. Um, but overall, if you're, if you're in a new city, uh, try to budget ahead as to what you're going to spend on dog food. Um, always budget for water bottles as well, especially if you're in a city where you're not quite sure about the uh, quality of, of the water. Um, and uh, you could buy like these little collapsible bowls um, for food, one for food and one for water. And uh, they will set you back maybe at the most like 10 euros each or something like that. Um, so now I've spoken to a few other uh, people who travel with their dogs. I've spoken to, um, uh, you should check out Monte Cristo Travels on Instagram, as well as the Tropical Dog and Princess Spooky. And I've spoken to them and, and it's quite interesting. Um, uh, they actually don't buy dog food. They, for the most part, um, cook their own meals. And it's something, like I said, I, I mentioned before, I, I do mix uh, home cooked meals with Rocky's own dry dog food, as well as raw food. Um, so, so yeah, of course, I know that not everybody has the, uh, the time to cook while they're out traveling. Uh, so that's why I recommend either packing enough dog food or budgeting to include the, the, the cost of a new dog food, um, from a local pet store. Uh, so overall, what are the costs? Um, so it really just depends on how long you're traveling for and, uh, in which country as well as what it is that you exactly feed your dog. But overall, I wouldn't say that dog food expenses are going to break your bank, uh, especially if you already shop for food yourself. Uh, you could just add in uh, a little extra for your dog, which is what I do. And uh, you can make him or her a home cooked meal or a, a hotel cooked meal or bed and breakfast cooked meal. Uh, for me and Rocky, uh, I'll just give you a quick example. Um, you know, maybe I'll, on a certain day, I'll buy a small, a small bag of a certain kind of dog food. For him and uh and then i'll buy some food for myself and uh i'll get some extra chicken or turkey or some salmon and uh and some fresh fruits vegetables uh eggs stuff like that and um yeah that that'll be like his his meals i'll just i'll just cook some of it and um mix it in with some of that dog food 
Um, so yeah, as an example, let's say we go to France for a week. Um, I would say if I do the grocery store thing uh, and the dog food thing, I would say overall, it's not any more than a couple of euros uh, per, per day. So yeah, let's talk about the next one. I'm really shaking this camera a lot, aren't I? Um, transportation. Uh, and so this one can be a little bit tricky depending on what kind of transportation that you use. Um, so generally around Europe, which is what I'm talking about here, uh, it's pretty easy to get around using just public transportation. Yeah, I'm gonna cover public transportation first. So in the UK, which we have the most uh, experience traveling around, you'll be delighted to know that uh, you can travel all over the trains for free and you can travel on the buses for free as well and, and the trams. Uh, and there's no extra cost and it doesn't matter how big your dog is. So you'll be happy to know that if you're traveling with a Chihuahua or a Great Dane uh, in the UK, uh, they'll travel for free. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, however, in other European countries, for example, like France and Spain, uh, the big dogs can join you on, on trains and metros, uh, but it's usually for a fee. Uh, and it's usually half the price of a second class fare for smaller, tra for smaller dogs. It uh, depends on the uh, on the train line. Um, usually, there's no fee if the dog uh, travels in a in a pet carrier. So yeah, that's where the Pomeranians and the Chihuahuas are just uh, some lucky dogs. Um, so of course, for the bigger dogs, I'd recommend buying uh, tickets as far advanced as you can. Um, however, I should note that in some countries, for example, uh, France, we try to um, we try to buy a ticket on online in advance, but it's not possible. So you actually have to uh, buy it the day of, or you have to call them ahead of time, and uh, it will usually be half the price uh, of a second class fare. So keep that in mind uh, while traveling on the trains. Um, and so for the metros in Europe and the UK, we found that many uh, dogs can travel there for free. As far as the trams, uh, some countries such as the Netherlands, I believe, uh, charge you a small fee, usually no more than a couple of euros. Um, to travel with your dog. So again, keep that in mind while you're budgeting uh, your trip. Also, keep in mind that if you do have a bigger dog, uh, most European countries will require you to have a muzzle for them uh, when you're traveling on the, uh, on the metro or on the train or on the tram or on the bus. And uh, a, decent, a decent muzzle will run you somewhere around like 10 to 20 euros. So try to budget that as well. Um, now, what about the other types of transports? Uh, generally, if you book a car, um, then there's no extra cost really. And that's actually the favorite, uh, our favorite way of traveling because you can actually, I mean, with a car you can visit, uh, you have a lot of flexibility. We can visit so many of uh, the small towns or you know, any city that we really want to. Um, so yeah, um, you have a lot of control over your trip. I would say though, I, I would recommend that you keep the car as clean as you can and uh, vacuum up any pet hair because uh, in our experience, uh, the, the car rental places will charge you a pretty hefty cleaning fee. Uh, thanks, Rocky, um, for, uh, for, yeah, just for having the pet hair all over, your, all over the car. Um, so now with a car, you can go everywhere, but there are times that you can only get somewhere via ferry. And you should know that it does cost money uh, for your pet to board the ferry. Uh, some ferries just charge you just for having your pet in the car. Um, so other ferries, for example, like the, uh, the UK to Holland ferry, have their own uh, rooms for dogs, their own kennels, and uh, they're air conditioned, but obviously they aren't free. I believe the last time we went there, it was about 18 euros, right Rocky? 18 euros uh, each way. Uh, so it wasn't that bad. I think if you book a little bit in advance, it's a little bit cheaper. Um, so yeah, if you're on a road trip and you need to take the ferry, don't forget to budget for that. Um, so we covered trains, uh, automobiles, ferries, uh, trams, the metro. Uh, what about walking? So, well, if you're walking, if you're doing the hitchhiking thing, um, well, that's a lot, <laughs> that's a lot of walking if you're going from like France to Greece or something like that. But, uh, if that's your thing, if that's your thing, then, um, you know, if you're hitchhiking across Europe, then you'll be pleased to know about ride sharing sites like uh, Blah Blah Car, for example, where if somebody has a car and they want to rent out their uh, one of their seats, then all you have to do is get in touch with them via this website and uh, you can actually rent out their um, the seat. And I think it's, uh, for example, uh, I, I, I can look now on the website and it'll be, um, I can look now from Barcelona to Paris, it would cost me about 80 pounds. 
And um, you, of course, you have to ask the driver if you can take your dog with you. Uh, but generally, um, a lot of people will say yes, especially if you tell them that they're well behaved. And it's uh, no extra cost. Uh, actually, hold on. If you're taking a ferry from uh, one country to another, then you have to pay whatever the, uh, the pet fee is for the ferry. Uh, so what about planes? Uh, that's a tough one. Uh, generally, some airlines such as Air France have a fee when it comes to transporting dogs. And uh, it depends on whether you're transporting your dog via a uh, um, carrier or, a, uh, or the hold. Um, you know, the, um, yeah, the, the, the cargo hold. So, it, and it could be anywhere from 50 to 100 euros. Again, this is where the, uh, the little dogs win. So, um, yeah, there's, I always kind of wish that I could just, um, that Pokeballs were a real thing and that I could just put Rocky in a Pokeball, travel anywhere I want by plane, and uh, once we land, I can just uh, Pokemon go and uh, Rocky pops out. Anyway, that's not possible. So um, if you want to go somewhere long distance, like let's say to Thailand, uh, or well, we're keeping it within Europe. If you want to go somewhere long distance, um, let's say from, from the UK to Malta, then you'll probably have to take a, a, a plane. Um, do your research. I, I generally I go with the European airlines because just in my experience, and I had this idea that um, that the European airlines seem to be a little bit more um, understanding of pets and uh, pet owners. But that's just my opinion. Um, I also want to touch on um, ESAs, emotional support animals, as well as other types of service dogs. Um, if you're afraid of flying or if you have anxiety or other ailments. Um, uh, then many airlines will actually allow you to have uh, your dog by your side. Um, and if you, if you have a seeing eye dog or if you have another type of guide dog as well, then your dog flies for free in most countries. And um, if you have, like I said, if you have a guide dog, not only can you fly for free, but you can also take the train and you can also take um, other forms of public transport for free. Uh, so I personally get a lot of anxiety in planes. I don't like to use planes a lot. But there has been a couple of rare occasions where I have taken Rocky on the plane. Uh, he's very, very well behaved, um, but it's something I rarely ever do, especially because I, I'm, I'm in Europe. And um, that said, Europe is, is a very small continent. Uh, so you, generally speaking, you can just travel around Europe uh, without having to resort to, um, to planes. So anyway, let's talk about the third one. Now, there'll probably come a time when you're out and about traveling with your dog where you're gonna have to uh, tell them that you're going to the dog park and uh, you actually have to take them to the vet. Funny enough, Rocky actually enjoys the vet, right Rocky? Um, yeah, he just nodded, yes. Uh, I don't know why, I think it's because they give him free treats. Um, anyway, my first advice is to always have a small emergency fund, uh, no matter if you're traveling or not, just have a small emergency fund um, for, to cover any vet visits. Um, and it could definitely come in handy when you're traveling with your dog and let's say your dog gets sick, um, then this emergency fund, you'll be happy that you have it. As far as the vet visits that are necessary when you're traveling to Europe or around Europe or in and out of Europe, um, of course, there's a rabies shot, uh, which many European countries require you to have um, when you enter their country. Uh, and now I can't stress this enough, but if you're traveling around Europe, it's completely worth getting a pet passport. Um, from your veterinarian uh, and just ask any vet in Europe and uh, to get your pet passport which um, which holds your microchip information well not yours but your pets microchip information uh, and all the vaccines as well oops sorry um, so generally this pet passport uh, generally this pet passport covers you when you're traveling across the continent and within the European Union and the European Economic Area countries so yeah the, the pet passport is uh, it's it's a one-off cost uh, excuse me, uh, it's really hot. Um, it's a it's a one-off cost, and and the cost varies from pet to pet. For example, um, uh, in the UK, I, I, I understand from what I understand, they're generally about 150 pounds, uh, anywhere from 100 to 150 pounds. Um, we were fortunate enough to get it for free because I was a master's student at the time where we started to travel, and uh, the veterinarian was very sympathetic to uh, to students. But uh, in, in Europe, I would try to budget around 150, uh, 150 pounds or 150, maybe 150 euros. Um, and I would say it's definitely worth it. It saves you time, saves you money, and it saves you paperwork. Let's say you're traveling to the UK or Ireland from continental Europe. Uh, then you must get this extra, treat, this extra treatment uh, called tra tapeworm treatment. 
uh, before you're able to enter. And uh, the treatment must have been given no less than 24 hours and no more than 120 hours, that's five days, uh, before, you're into, before you enter the UK. And uh, your dog can actually be refused entry if uh, you don't follow these rules. So um, yeah, definitely follow them. The cost of tapeworm varies, but it's usually around 30 to 50 euros. So let's say you're coming to Europe from another country. For example, me and Rocky traveled to the UK from the US. Um, if you're doing this, I would recommend budgeting a couple hundred dollars to take care of uh, all the paperwork and, and all the vaccines and other things like that. Um, so yeah, the vet could potentially be the most expensive expense you'll have when you're traveling with your dog. Um, but once you're in continental Europe and you have your pet passport, then pretty much all you should have is your, uh, your veterinary emergency fund. And uh, yeah, I think that just about covers it. Um, and that's pretty much all three of the, uh, of the biggest expenses you'll come across when you travel with your dog. If you have any questions or comments, uh, you know where to leave them. If you like the video, um, give it a thumbs up and please consider uh, hitting that subscribe button. And uh, thanks, yeah, we'll see you on the next adventure.